This is Twit. I've been holding off doing the Divin because I haven't opened any bottles and I'm going to get them home first. And we had a good time last week, uh, well, a couple of weeks ago doing the Dalwini, and then we went to Four Roses. So I figured I'd dip back into that uh, classics collection with the Glen Kinchy. Um, now, this is a lowland whiskey, and it's just as a little bit of a reminder, this distillery uh, is actually quite close to Edinburgh. Uh, Edinburgh and, and uh, Glasgow are all the areas that we call the lowlands. There are very few distilleries in there today. There used to be many more. They're down to maybe about six operating, although the rumor has it that the Rosebank distillery is going to open up again, which is exciting. Um, Lowlands, one of the original regions. There used to only be four whiskey regions. They sort of defined the Lowlands was that area around Edinburgh and, and Glasgow, Fife, Dumfries, Galloway, that kind of thing. Uh, in the past, we talk about Akintoshin, which is also a Lowland whiskey. And then Eiley down in the southwest, uh, you know, island with very few trees. That's why they're so heavy on the peat. We've talked about Bowmore and Port Escague. And then east of Eiley is Campbelltown, which is the peninsula on the south part, a little more protected. So uh, they have more options there. And again, another place that used to have a lot of distilleries, but is down to like three. And then everything else was called Highlands, uh, which they've now sort of divvied the Highlands up. Uh, they, they, the Highlands encompass this huge area above the big cities in the Highlands and all the way up onto the coast. So that's you know seventy five percent of distilleries these days. So the Spey side is recognized separately from the rest of the Highlands because it's along the Spey River. It by itself is sixty distilleries in a relatively small area. And then I think it's only fair to carve the islands off on their own, which most people do these days. So that stretches from just north of Eiley with Arne and Jura, Mull, Orkney, all the way up to Sky, which is in the northwest, which is where Talisker is. Uh, and all make a unique kind of uh, whiskey themselves. You know, the island whiskeys tend to be a bit peatier, not as peaty as many Eileys, saltier. And that makes the Highlands a bit more of a consistent version now, even though you're still talking a very big region when you talk about Highlands. But we were talking about a lowland. We were talking about one of the few, the Glen Kinchy. Um, things to know about it. Well, it's owned by Diageo because it was once owned by United Distillers since it was part of that collection. Although Diageo refers to Glen Kinchy as one of the four corners of Johnny Walker. Uh-huh. And so... Um, Diageo is one of the largest owners of Scottish distilleries. They make one of the most popular scotches in the world, Johnny Walker, the variety of versions, which they use by blending many distilleries, whiskeys into it. And most of which have no visible brand, ones you've never heard of. The four pill, uh, corners, the corner distilleries of Johnny Walker are Glen Kinchy in the Lowlands, uh, Kao Ila in Islay, Plyanish in the Highlands, and Cardew in Speyside. Uh, interesting, and most people haven't heard of Cardu. Client issue too is pretty rare. Kaolila has a good brand, uh, fairly well known, but those are the four pillars. Uh, the Glen Clinchy Distillery itself is fairly old. Uh, 1825 is the first mention of a distillery in that location, about 15 imperial miles uh, east, southeast of um, Edinburgh. It was called the Milton Distillery when it first opened, but within a decade or so, it was renamed to. Glen Kinchy in the perversion of names in that particular area. Uh, went bankrupt a few years later, 1853, and then it was sold to a local farmer who made it into a sawmill. And it stayed a sawmill for 30 years or so. 1881, a group of Edinburgh investors bought it and converted it back to a distillery, calling it Glen Kinchy once again, and it continued to function through there. It uh, was stayed in business through the uh, Prohibition. It was one of the very few distilleries was allowed to operate through World War II. It, like most distilleries, modernized in the late 60s, 70s, stopped doing its own maltings, improved some of the technology. Today, it's still a fairly simple distillery, more, mostly a 70s, 80s technology distillery. It has one big nine ton mash tun, one of the biggest ones in the industry, uh, six washbacks, and just uh, one pair of stills. It puts out two and a half million liters of spirits a year, of which 90% of which goes into Johnny Walker blends. So the few bottles that you see on the shelves of Glen Kinchin, you can get in the U.S., uh, represent a 
very small portion of their overall production. For the most part, it was not a well-known distillery until the uh, United Distillers did their classic malts in the 1980s. And back then, the classic malt they referred to for the Lowlands was Glen Kinchy 10, which you really can't get anymore. Uh, I went searching on the rare whiskey sites for Glen Kinchy 10 from the 1980s, and occasionally you can find a bottle for about 500 US, uh, which I would not pay. It's, there's no reason to, to buy that. They do make uh, distillers editions once in a while, usually with some interesting finishing barrels, and they'll be about $150 or so. But the standard product is a 12, and it is absolutely a classic Lowland, which is to say it tends towards the lighter side, sort of grassy and fruity notes, not too big, not too harsh, uh, not a real strong flavor. It's only coming in at about 46%, so it's not going to punch your eyes out. You know, it's a nice gentle dram when you can count on uh, like the Dalwini is just approachable and about $80. So not the cheapest bottle of whiskey out there, but not the most expensive either. And uh, something a little different. You know, we generally drink, you're either into the peat and you're drinking your Islay or you love the space with their big, rich sherry casks and so forth. This is neither of those. This is real simple whiskey, old style, but it's good. You should try some. Uh, okay. <laughs> do it right now malts.com because it's Diageo and that's, that's the Diageo site yep. we were there we were Dalwini as well yeah yeah. hey thank you Mr. Richard Campbell host of Run As Radio and .NET Rocks mm -hmm. at runasradio.com mm -hmm. great to have you on as always from Sweden safe travels home 